How's it? Welcome along to Baz's Garage. Um, days are getting shorter, nights are getting longer. Um, in the garage at night time now. Um, lights are on, so we can see what we're doing. Let's have a bit of a talk about the uh, the Peerless 1000 right angle drives. So these here are a Peerless 1000 right angle drive, which is what we run in our mowers. So we have to run a gearbox of some sort, and this is my choice of gearboxes. Um, the reason for it is that they're really simple. There's not a lot of uh, things to go wrong with them. Uh, no gears to strip, and um, they seem to handle um, plenty of power without causing any issues. The thing to do is when you get one of these, um, they come on some of the decks from the old power ponies, uh, they come off um, uh, other right angle drives for driving the belts and things, uh, and you can buy them new as well I think. You can also buy T drives, um, but I've had these um, over the years and um, I've had no issues with them and I've got a couple of them lying around so I've got bits and pieces I can make up a good one with. So, Right, let's have a chat about them. Right angle drive, one to one ratio, so where this turns one, this turns one as well. So there's no gearing advantage in any way through the gearbox. Uh, the way they come apart is pretty simple, four screws on the top. Now there are different types, you can see this one's got a right angle right hand on it, which means it's a right hand drive. So if you get one of these and you're unsure about which direction they're going to spin, pays to trial fit them up and then get the direction on here correct with the way the engine's going and then make sure this is going the right direction so you're not going to end up going forwards instead of backwards or backwards instead of forwards. So once the lid comes off, there's a couple of holes on the top of here. These holes are this one here, I tap, cut a hole, tap the thread into it and this becomes a filling point for the gearbox. So these come originally with grease in them um, and then what you do is you take all the grease, clear it all out and we're going to run oil in them. So we're going to run a um, uh, an EP extreme pressure oil and I also add an oil additive as well but we'll talk about that a bit later. So this is for filling it up and then what I do is I drill a little hole and tap it and I've just got a plastic barb fitting in here and I just put a little um, piece of vacuum hose on there and that's the vent for the gearbox because the gearbox is it's spinning so fast it builds up uh, air pressure uh, you want to release that pressure otherwise it'll blow oil out past the seals. So once you've got the top off it drill a hole put a filler bung in there and then do another small hole put a barb in there and you can uh, fit your vent on it so however you do that is up to you it doesn't have to be a plastic one like that you can buy a nice brass one or however you want to do it for the vent but you need to vent it and you need to have some way of filling it but also you can check the level with this so you can undo this and you can get a feeler gauge and push it down through and find out how much oil is in there so you know whether you've got to change it or not all right looking inside the gearbox very, very simple. It's just a, a couple of gears, a couple of spider gears uh, in there, bevel gears, and a shaft. Really easy to uh, to work on. To pull it apart, there's four bolts around the front. Um, you undo the four bolts. So we'll just do that now so you can have a look. Just undo the four bolts. These are just sitting here loosely so I can show you how it all works. Right, once that slides off, this has got a seal in here um, and pays to replace this seal because they go all they go all yucky and solid after a while. So you can buy these seals um, uh, from most seals manufacturers. You can actually go out and measure them up. You can buy genuine ones as well. So you just measure it up with a pair of uh, verniers and then you can go and get one. The part numbers are actually in the manual if you look that up as well. So inside here you can see it's got a bearing here and it's also got a bearing in the other side. So this shaft here is actually quite well supported with a bearing here and a bearing here. So that loading on here can quite easily be supported by those two bearings. This bevel gear, the interchangeable front or rear, so it doesn't really matter which way they go around. Uh, they are splined and they'll fit onto the, uh, the shaft here. So the shaft and the bearing, now what I suggest you do is when you get one you, have, you don't know anything about, is to pop the bearings out all around clean them all out with white spirits, have a feel of them, see how they feel. If you have to replace them, then put new bearings in. So then we look inside it, you can see there's another bevel gear and uh, it's attached with a circlip in there. So what I do is I just put this bit into the vise, much easier to hold it like this. Get your, uh, your circlip pliers, we'll go inside here and we'll try and get onto the circlip pliers and here we go, so the circlip comes off. The good, the good way to work on this sort of stuff is if you're working on it and you're not sure how it goes back together again, take photos as you go or lay it out. So lay that out, put your four bolts in there. If I pull the bearing off, 
lay the bearing there, lay the shaft there, then lay the gear on the other end, and then you know that when you put it together, it's in the same way that you pulled it apart. So theoretically, if you forget how it goes together, you'll know how it goes um, by laying it out correctly. So it's a good way to go about it. So I've just pulled this off, so I'd put the circlet there. Uh, inside here is the right angle drive. So all going well, we should have to go and it'll fall out. So then there's the bearing, the, the bevel gear. Inside here, there's also a couple of bearings. Now what I'm gonna do is hopefully, that's the bearing, and you can see there's another bearing inside there, okay? So to get this shaft out, you actually have to take the bearing off, and then you can knock the whole thing through. The seal will come out with it. Now I'm not gonna do that now because this is a new seal I put in a while ago. So also good idea to put a new seal in it when you're rebuilding the gearbox because oil is thinner than the grease that was in it and you'll find that if you don't put a new seal it'll just leak out through the side of here. Uh, the other good thing with these is these actually come with a, a keyway already cut into the, into the splines, uh, into the shaft and I've just made up a, uh, a new key to fit into it and I've also modified it so I've got a new type of uh, bylock pulley or it's not really called a bylock it's a, a locking pulley this is an SKF brand uh, what this does is it's got a different way of locking so it's actually got a spline in it which the bylocks don't have so what it means is I can slide that over there and it gives me really good traction onto there as well as it's got the split so when that fits into here uh, is that the right way around no so when it fits into there these grub screws here they screw down into here, and as you screw them down in, they actually squeeze that together and give you a good lock on the shaft as well as the keyway. So it's a much better way to hold the pulley onto the right angle drive, so I quite like that. And to get it apart, all you do is undo it, screw it into there, and then it pops the two pieces apart and you can pull it off. So that's the new one I've got for there. The other thing um, to look at is if you're reassembling this, so now that we've got it down to nothing, obviously you're gonna clean it out completely, clean all the bearings out, check all the bearings. If they feel rumbly, so you wanna grab the bearing and just give it a turn, see if it feels rumbly, it feels okay. If it's not too bad, I would reuse them. The bearing you can see is already inside there. Uh, I would replace it underneath here if I was going to um, completely rebuild this. This one here goes back onto the top of here again and it should fit down relatively easy. You can, if you want to, get a slight punch and just tap the bearing down so that it goes down flush. Then we've got to get the bevel gear. The bevel gear goes on top. Now, it does pay to look at these bevel gears and see if they've got any major wear or any marks on them. Now, these aren't too bad, so you can get away with a hell of a lot with these gearboxes. The tolerances are pretty large, so then we put this back together again, same way as we did before. We get the little circlet pliers, put it in a little hole, spread it out, and then drop it on there and make sure that it's come back in there again. So that's sitting in there where it should do. Then we're going to get that uh, the bearing and the shaft in this piece. So we'll slide that through, put the bevel gear on, put the bevel gear down there, push it in, get the bearing, do the same thing, push it through. The bearing will only go in so far, and it'll sit there. Then we grab the housing. Now when you come to put the housing together, I use a stuff like uh, Ultimate Grey um, or something like that. Um, you want to be careful using this stuff because if you put too much of the silicon in and it overflows, it can get caught in the gears and the bearings and cause you drama. So you only need a small amount of this uh, around the inside of here just to give it a sealing. And then that goes back on and then we'll bolt up the bolts that we've got in here. So we'll bolt these up just temporarily for the moment just so you can see it's gone back on there so what I've also done with this one is um, at the end of here I've actually cut a groove in it it had a little uh, little keyway in it but I've made the keyway bigger and I've actually machined this down just a little bit to fit the cog that I'm using now you can see this is an 08B cog so this is very similar to a 428 a 428 chain will run on this they're not exactly the same, but they're close enough for what we need to make it work. And they're easier to get hold of. They come as a blank, and then you can drill out the size you want. Now, I cut the keyways, uh, and you don't need any specialist machinery to cut the keyways. Basically, you just end up with a, a piece like this, which, okay, I've made these, but you can buy them. 
what this allows you to do is you go onto eBay or onto AliExpress and you buy a brooch. This is called a brooch. And what it is, it's a tapered lot of cutting teeth. And uh, what you do is you make up this little piece here. This is 19 mil, so it fits nicely in there. Then you grab the brooch. And normally this keyway is not here. So to start off with, you put a little spacer like this in behind here. And then you get the brooch around the right way. And then you push it in. And as it goes down, it starts to cut the keyway. So all you do is you put it in a press and you just push it down slowly and it will cut the keyway. Once you've had the first cut, then you put another spacer in. Uh, I don't know if I've got any other spacers here. What you do is put another spacer like this in so it moves forward just the thickness of the spacer. And then you push it down through again. You do very small cuts and eventually you end up with cutting your, your keyway, which is in there. And that obviously matches the keyway into this piece and then you can just slide this on. So this can work for any size shaft, you can cut the hole for whatever size shaft, but these normally only come certain sizes. So this is 19, um, you can get them in 25 um, and imperial sizes as well. So that's what I use to cut the keyway in the cog, and then obviously I just use a, um, uh, a cutter that just cuts that through. It sits in like a drill press and you just move it back and forth and take small cuts and away you go. So that's all set up ready to go. Then you'll grab the um, the top, which you've already got the hole in, uh, and then you'll bolt that back on again. And again, you need to look where this is sitting because you don't want it to hit on the gear inside there. So this is going to go on this way. We'll bolt it down, and then <coughs> we can um, check the oil level. So the oil level in here, I recommend that you bring the oil level up to basically halfway along the shaft. So it's about halfway along the shaft along here is where you want the oil level to be. And so that when it spins, it's actually spinning oil up around the bearings and it's spinning oil up around the gears. If it's too full, it will actually overflow and cause pressure inside there. So yeah, I reckon you go just up to halfway along that shaft and then everything will get lubricated and there's space for it to um, expand as well. Once it's all together, I'll just grab a uh, spanner for this. So um, hold that thought while you're there. So I spin it. You always got to get all your spinners nice and organized so you can find them, which is not the case for the moment. Right, so then we'll just see if I can undo this from the bench. So what this does is It enables you to fill up and see the oil level through there but also if you've got something like a split pin and you want to check the oil level all you have to do is put the split pin down in there and then when you pull it up it'll be like a little dipstick and it'll show you how much oil is in the gearbox it'll also show you the color of the oil so that you can then decide whether you need to change it very often or not generally once they're sealed i have checked them once a year and then after a couple of years i might change the oil if it looks a bit dirty but they seem to last pretty well with the with the um, the speeds and things that we're driving on them. So then you can put that back in again, tighten it up, and then everything's all good to go again. <clears throat> now the reason I had to do this was because the right angle drive I had in my other uh, mower actually sheared the shaft off. I found out that it actually been bored out through the centre, and the shaft was actually very thin, and it just collapsed and broke. So this one here is a solid shaft. Um, it should last plenty of time. The one in my and the other mower that I've had for a long time has never given me any problems, so I don't envisage this giving me any problems either. So, right, that's basically how you rebuild yourself a Peerless 1000 right angle drive. Um, I think they've got a way to go. Um, I prefer them to any other type of gearbox, except for maybe the uh, T drives, which you've seen I've used before. Uh, I find them easy to get hold of. I've got two or three of them here that I've used over the years. I've got one that's been in a mower for about 10 years had no issues with it um, so I reckon these are the way to go so just quickly show you how to rebuild them fill them with oil um, and the other thing I add into them is something like this which is a Lucas heavy duty oil stabilizer uh, it's an oil additive it's really really thick and gooey so you'll need an HD90 oil gear to go in here which is a really thick EP oil and I add some of this in as well just to make it a little bit thicker a little bit stronger and last longer so once you've got it filled up all good to go bolt it back in the engine put your uh, put your gears on put your pulley on the bottom and then you're all ready to go and do some more racing so I've got to get this done 
fairly quickly because we've got racing coming up again very soon. Um, other than that, yeah, that's basically Baz's garage for this time, and um, we'll catch up with you next time. Cheers.